Yeah, I know. Tommy said he wants to finish the mini form. He does. He's been very helpful. He's been very helpful with the mini as well. Hey Tommy. Are you always trying to get me to break my back? Well, this time I don't need you to break your back. Never mind, I got it. I was in fear that the only thing holy holding up the transmission was me. Oh. Because the trap wasn't tight enough and it all came undone. It's that time, everyone. We're getting ready to get out of here. Garrett's waiting out front, so hopefully he has my snap-on charger for my scan tool. But I did want to show you something, and it has to do with the power bank drawer on the Matco 4S before you guys buy it. Something to consider, depending on what kind of charging products that you have. Let's take a look. Okay, first, here's what works and doesn't work. We got the Dewalt. Flashlight, obviously, is going to make it the 14.4 not the 18 i'm going to show you why here in a minute the matco 16 and you see i can close right but here's the problem look at this this is the 16 volt charger and with the matco 4s system it's too bulky to actually plug in like it's supposed to so i had to piggyback off of the snap-on in order for that to work and it's a matco charger Okay, we're gonna go one step further. We are gonna take Shane's Matco 18 slash 20 volt charger. We're gonna plug it in and just see if the 18 volt will work for it. Okay, so with Shane's 20 volt Matco, it does clear. So keep that food for thought. The little tiny guy doesn't work. You're gonna to have to have some way of being able to piggyback it in order for that to work there. But the big dog will fit if you have the Matco half inch impact. Okay, now with the snap-on 18 volt, you'll see where it hits, so I can't charge that in there. What's going on everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back! So Wednesday's over with, and we're getting ready to step into Tay Tay Thursday, and you know what that means. Two more days until my last day of work, right? From there, I'm having my toolbox towed to the dealership, and we will just see what new adventures we can embark on going forward, obviously, because I'm not sure what we're gonna be able to discuss. We'll just play it by ear. But if you would like more tips on mechanic insight or see tool reviews, make sure to smash on those suds, my buds, but don't smash it too hard, because then you shake it all up, and then you get it everywhere, and then that'll be a party foul, right? Because beer has a tendency of doing that if you get it too much shaken up. So don't shake it too hard when you tap it. 
but tap it just hard enough to be a subscriber so that way you can see my next upcoming upload. But in order to know when to be notified, you need to smash the bell, right? So smash the bell if you want to be notified when I post my next video or if you just want to hang out with us on Friday, right? TGIF, baby. That being said, let's dive into today's discussion topic. Kind of a weird day, all right? So I went back to the Mini Cooper, started kind of piecing it back together, finally got the water tube that I needed for the inlet pipe going towards the water pump, started installing the thermostat and the hose, which you guys kind of saw me applying some Silaglide to. That stuff is absolutely amazing. Yes, it is available on Amazon, and I'll again put the Amazon affiliate link down below in the description for you, but you can also buy it from your local Napa, which is what I did. Speaking of which, Napa, I haven't been in there in a little while. They are now starting to carry the Craftsman tool lineup. You know what I didn't see a lot of? The same exact price where the Craftsman was, there's no more Evercraft. So did they get rid of Evercraft? I guess that would be my question to everybody else that goes to Napa quite frequently. I didn't see any Evercraft, I saw Craftsman. But it was pretty cool because there was a lot of Craftsman tools that were actually on the shelf that were more driven towards the mechanic versus going to somewhere like Lowe's, which was more kind of in between, right? They had some stuff for mechanics, but they have some stuff for construction workers and contracting and DIY. But this is more mechanically focused, which I could appreciate. So I love what Napa's done with the shelving. Um, they were more mechanically driven. I did ask about their line wrenches. Unfortunately, they didn't have any Craftsman ones, so I went the next best thing, right? Carlisle. I picked up the half inch uh, and 9 16 and 3 8 and 7 16 I believe it was. A little picture down here in the corner for you guys to see, as well as the Silaglide. Needed that today, right? So I picked those three things up during my lunch break. I actually take my lunch break relatively early, somewhere between 9 and 11. Not gonna get that luxury when I go to the dealership. My lunch will effectively be around noon, so I'm gonna have to readjust my appetite somehow, whether I have snacks or whatever. So that's gonna be a huge change moving forward. All right, so technically my hutch for the Matco 4S did show up today, but it showed up in very, very bad condition. So that being said, it's gonna be about eight weeks before I actually see the hutch. So I'll be using the box the way that it is until the new one comes. When it comes, I'm sure he'll help me to install it and we can go from there and maybe I'll take a little quick sneak peek picture to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, but we're about two months away now. So I kind of paid it forward a little bit, gave him money up front to kind of go towards that so I, when it comes in, I don't got to worry about it. It's always a good thing. And I want to tell you guys, look, when you're thinking about buying something expensive, even if it's on order or whatever, you don't have to wait until it actually comes in to pay your tool rep. You can actually pay them ahead of time because really what's the difference between you putting it on an RA account or an on-truck account or you paying them forward and then basically holding on to your money for something that you already know you're going to spend it on. So I've done this with a couple of tool dealers throughout time. It just helps to where I don't have to worry about necessarily paying them back. It's already kind of paid forward. So that way it's one less thing that I have to worry about, right? So I would encourage everybody, if you're planning on doing something, some purchasing on the tool truck, maybe consider paying it forward. Uh, so long as your tool truck guy shows up every week, okay? I know that can be a huge thing. So you, you get to know people though. You get to know which ones you can pay it forward to, which ones you can't. And of course, there's gonna be certain extenuating circumstances gonna make it to where you borrow from them temporarily and then pay them back when it comes in or whatever. I get that part too. All right, so speaking of which, Matco did stop by, so that's how I know that the hutch didn't come in. Um, but I did pick up the three things that I was telling you guys about the day before, which was the exhaust hanger, uh, pliers that you squeeze and remove the, the rubber boots from, so that way you can disconnect the exhaust pipe and drop it down. I also picked up the flywheel turning tool, and I did pick up one miniature crescent wrench, which I was surprised. I think it went up to 27 millimeter and it was a lot shorter than the Armstrong one that I had that I used in the Corvette. But this is now two Chevys in one day that I had a need for a 21. Go figure, all the wrenches that I have in my drawer, no 21 millimeter. It starts at 22 and goes all the way up and it's big dog stuff, or it goes up to about 19 and there's some smaller stuff in between, right? But I did not, honestly did not have a 21 in anything. So I know it's a pretty common size, not just for my alignment guys, but if you're doing any kind of heavy line work when it comes to spinning a wrench for Chevy, you're gonna need the 21. So I 
I decided to go with a little crescent wrench. Maybe in time I'll go pick one up. I was surprised to know that it was almost uh, 80 or 100 bucks for one wrench from Matco. I decided not to do that. Instead, I picked up a small crescent wrench for like 30 or 40 bucks, and I'll just go get a 20 or $30 wrench from Carlisle or maybe even Craftsman. Okay, the transmission job. You guys might have seen me silently showing you some cooler clean. So anytime we're doing a transmission swap, whether it's new, remand, or an LKQ special, we always flush out the cooler lines. And you want to do this because all that nasty debris from the previously burnt transmission will end up in the brand new one, and you don't want that. So you use cooler clean, you flush the lines through, all the way through the condenser, back into the pan until it comes out clear, then you use an air gun to push all the cooler clean through the rest of it into the oil catch pan. And then you go ahead and you can go back to reassembling. You can do this with a couple of pieces of long 3 8 hose. Okay, I find that a couple feet works out just fine. That way you know for sure it's going in the catch pan. When I first started doing this whole like cleaning the lines out thing, I made a huge mess and I always had to pressure wash the car. I decided the best route to go here was to take some 3 8 hose, just connect it to the end of the trans line and let it point right down towards a catch receptacle. And then blow it out, of course. If it's an LKQ special, a lot of guys don't like putting junkyard transmissions in. I'm not against it, okay? Most of them work out, and the ones that don't work out, you end up getting paid twice the labor for to do it again, because, you know, warranty, right? You get warranty through LKQ for up to a certain time frame. If it doesn't work out upon installation, the LKQ pays the shop again, so you just end up getting better and more proficient at taking it apart and putting it back together. So it is what it is. But always change out the transmission filter within the transmission. Also, always make sure to drain out all the old fluid from the one that you're taking apart to get rid of before you make it a core, right? And as soon as the core is ready, it can be shipped off, the shop gets paid for their core, and you're good to go. All right, guys, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. Look, I hope you enjoyed today's content. Cheers to those of you that have your beer. Smash the thumbs up on the way out the door, and we'll see you next time. This is.